must be some substance that we could fly over, put them to sleep for an hour, and go in again. The answer to the Attorney General's cry for help may not be that far off. As we've seen, many tools exist in labs around the country, but they've never been brought together in combination or used in a coordinated game plan. In this demonstration, we do just that. They think they'll see an assault coming. Even the computer is safe from outside attack. So they think. They've added a commercial virus protection program to keep their files from being frozen or destroyed by an outsider. They don't know that the real attack began weeks earlier at a government computer center. Federal agents have already entered that farmhouse through the virus protection program itself. The software update that loads the virus protection program into the farmhouse computer includes a so-called Trojan horse, a set of hidden instructions that lodge in the computer. This piece of software installs itself into their system and sends a copy of everything on their computer to the federal agents at night. Along with the Trojan horse is a logic bomb. It's another set of hidden priorities waiting to go off at the right moment. Mindy. That moment signals the start of the federal assault by flashing a warrant on the farmhouse computer telling the occupants to surrender. It freezes on the screen. The computer refuses to function further ignores all further keyboard and mouse commands. The night passes without further event. By morning, nothing much has changed, but that too is deceptive. Four hundred yards away, two snipers are lying out in the open disguised by metamorphic camouflage. The chemicals in their uniforms change color to match the light of the scene behind them. Up close, there's only a slight shimmering effect. From a distance, they're invisible. As the two snipers move closer for the final assault, their camouflage changes. When they move from shade to sunlight, the pattern lightens. As they pass a shadow, it darkens again. The modeled effect lets them neatly blend in with their surroundings. Even at 20 yards, the lookout sees almost nothing. If he sees anything, he'll probably think it's just rising heat waves. I bet they can hear the noise coming from that engine on that vehicle, even though they can't see it. Underneath those waves is a light armored vehicle, also hidden by active camouflage. It's wrapped on all sides with millions of fiber optic cables that send a picture to one side of the vehicle of what's on the other side. Meanwhile, a helicopter circles overhead. That's nothing new. Helicopters have been here for weeks, patrolling the compound perimeter. The helicopter drops a canister behind the house. Moments later, it drops a second canister in the yard. A few hours later, after dark, a preset timer in one canister sets off a brief crackling sound. Suddenly, every electrical device in the compound goes out. Lights, appliances, computers, they all flicker and die, fried by a burst of electromagnetic pulse. The occupants know something is happening. 
you just stay calm, right? But what? There's another crackle. A burst of EMP from the second canister. Every light in the compound goes out for good as the backup generator dies. Inside the light armored vehicle, the assault team gets ready for the final operation. In their own camouflage, they quickly cover the last few yards to the compound. Now that it's night, the two snipers who have been outside all day join them, working their way to the main entrance. Instead of trying to break down the metal door, they spray it with a chemical that turns it as brittle as a cracker. One push brings it down. They toss in a flashbang, a distraction device that works like a giant firecracker. A second grenade fills the interior with a sedative agent. Before the occupants can regain their bearings, every corner of the room is filled with sedative-laden smoke. The assault teams are protected by their jumpsuits and gas masks. The chemical quickly subdues everyone, adults and children, or puts them to sleep entirely. One man and one woman have been in another room, unaffected by the sedative. An agent catches the woman with a snare net. A stream of pepper-laced aqueous foam appears out of nowhere to cover the fleeing man. He falls to the ground from the pain. Inside, team members begin flex-cuffing their frightened, groggy targets. Suddenly, one more man bursts from a closet carrying a gun. That shot was a liquid-filled 12-gauge round that bursts on impact, dissipating the energy and spraying the target with pepper spray. Assault team members begin carrying out the sleeping children and loading them into waiting vehicles. Within minutes, everyone in the compound is captured. No one is seriously hurt. Not a lethal shot has been fired. And every one of the technologies used here exists in some form today. If some of them aren't yet fully realized, it's only because our imagination about using them hasn't been fully tapped. Non-lethals will remain controversial. Uh, I think those there will be those that object for a variety of reasons to the military getting deeply involved in this. Uh, but I think we're only just opening the door of possibilities into what this technology can bring us. And uh, uh, we could take the lead in this and it could put us in a position where we could deal with conflict and problems and the protection of our people and interests a lot better with this kind of capability. Janet Morris believes part of the value of non-lethals is the message they send when they're used. There are enough sticks and stones on this planet to kill everybody three times over. Your teeth, your thumbs, your feet can all be lethal weapons. A Bible can kill you if we drop it on your head from a height. Um, we're not going to wipe out lethal force in the hands of a barbaric enemy. What we are going to do is say that people who use lethal force are less civilized than people who do not use lethal force. And that will change the balance. An impossible dream. For today, maybe. But change is already happening on the front lines as police and soldiers find new solutions to new and difficult problems.